Welcome back to the Gaming X and today it's late but we're taking a look at Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD for the Nintendo Switch. Now let's see if this remastered Monkey Ball deserves a place in your collection. Hit like, hit subscribe, leave us a comment below with your thoughts and let's get this thing started. To gameplay and first it should be known that Monkey Ball as a series is one that I hold incredibly close to my heart. I have a huge amount of great memories growing up with the first and second in the series on the GameCube. This entry was the first on the Nintendo Wii and while it wouldn't have been my first choice for remasters, you know give me a joint one and two personally, it still does contain much of the gameplay that made the series so incredibly addictive. Now the idea here it's simple, you control the world, not the monkey and ball. Tilt the world with the joystick and watch that monkey roll through increasingly challenging levels. With Banana Blitz we also saw the introduction of jumping. Now I will say the controls to tilt they feel fantastic, they are responsive and they do everything you need to know that when something goes wrong it was very much your fault and not a lack of the game's quality. Unfortunately though, the same can't be said for Jump. This, like the original release, feels loose. It often requires jumps onto things like bouncing balls for example, and it all feels a little too luck based and very little in the sense of skill, which is really what Monkey Ball was built upon. Additionally, a major removal here from the game is the use of motion controls. For some reason it's been stripped out entirely, and I will say I wasn't a fan of motion controls in the original for this particular game, so I'm not really bothered honestly. I will say though it makes very little sense to me why they wouldn't do it here. We've seen some fantastic use of motion already on the Switch, just think Splatoon or Zelda. Unfortunately though I will say this actually leads to my, well my first gameplay complaint. The levels here are just too basic here, it's because of the design around motion. The game contains 10 worlds, each with roughly 10 levels with a ton of collectible bananas throughout. And they are fun, but the difficulty ramp that would slowly increase in past entries has gone. Instead here it's world difficulty, or at least it feels that way. With the switch to controls it makes the, the first 5 worlds incredibly easy before you really really hit a huge difficulty spike at world 6. It just makes things feel just a little slow to get started. Now some things have been changed slightly, some of the, um, the rails that you used to connect to and ride along have now been changed to thin walkways. But the game it features a ton of quality of life features for motion players. You'll see barriers on each side of the stage for example to just keep you from falling. They're very slight but they make a big difference. With motion these features they make sense but here it actually just adds to it being a simplified game in the Monkey Ball series. Now as I said the controls they do work really well. One point of pain that I do have though is the camera. I do wish they'd attached the camera to the right analog stick. Frequently I'd find the camera pointing the wrong way and now I'd have to roll the ball just slightly and try and force the camera to get around my character. Now this wouldn't be such a big deal but often these levels are on a really tight timer so I'd frequently fail at levels because it just couldn't keep up. Finally when it comes to gameplay we have two last things, one good, one bad. First an unlockable Sonic the Hedgehog and while it's purely visual honestly, they did a great job with this inclusion. Once you clear 8 of the 10 worlds, Sonic becomes playable and outside of obviously Sonic in a ball, the collectible bananas now change to the classic Sonic rings. It is largely visual for sure, but I really liked the reference to the mascot and I felt like they took a little bit of care here, so kudos. Last though, the bad boss battles. What a terrible idea they were first time around. I don't know why they didn't just remove them here. So it goes like this, roll around a circle while a broken camera that wasn't designed for this tries to keep the enemy in focus, while you then also try not to fall off the edge of a platform you frequently can't see. It is horrible. Without a story linking the world together the bosses make very little sense here to why to be honest they were included and 9 times out of 10, actually 10 times out of 10. I found no fun in them, they were simply a barrier to the game I wanted to play and the next world. Overall the gameplay it's stripped back from the original release. 
I do prefer the new controls here now, but do know that if you were a fan of those motion controls in the original, or even if you're just looking for a game that takes advantage of the motion, then that's here. I don't know why it didn't impact it for me, but I'm sure it will for some people. Next we have graphics, and I will say I'm impressed. You know what? They're not going to win any awards here, that's for sure, but they've done enough here just to bring it to the next generation of console. As expected, come looking for basic wall design that's bright and colourful. Sharpness has been increased with obviously the new HD visuals, and it really does everything you need to understand what you are doing and where that end goal is. Each character it has a nice set of animations to set them apart from each other, and boss designs, while I didn't enjoy them as I said, they do have some fun looking designs. One of issues I have is the maps, as they get more complicated as you progress through these 10 worlds, it would have been really nice to have a pause function where I could go to the overview of the map again. Instead, what you get at the beginning of each stage is just a rotating camera. And that's really all the time you get. If I could have paused, taken a look, it would have just given me a little bit more clarity on where I had to go as things really started to ramp. And that's really all that can be said for graphics, a bright colourful overload on the senses that definitely stays true to the series, with varying worlds keeping things fresh and fun. It's clearly a port, but it's a good one visually. Now last we have sound and music, and I've always been a fan of the Monkey Ball music. These have changed from the original release, I imagine licensing issues after the nearly 13 years it's been now, but this music, it's just as good, or at least as good as it is in my memory. It's catchy enough that you'll be humming along when you play, or even when you leave, but it's not so annoying to the point where it drives you absolutely insane. Some of these later levels, you're going to be restarting them a lot, so you need to expect to hear this music a lot, so that's probably the highest compliment I can give this one. Outside of music, there's very little to add. Each monkey has a few sound effects, which definitely work. There's a great voiceover announcer when you fall out or when you fail a level or reaching that timer countdown. It's definitely a throwback to those older Sega games when voiceovers were all the rage. But overall, generally, it's again all good here. So the final verdict and Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD is an interesting one. For an entry in the series, it's actually one of the weaker ones, but time has kind of been kind to it. No longer is it following in the shadow of the first and second in the series, and instead it can now be appreciated for what it is, a basic but still fun entry in the Monkey Ball universe. Yes, the difficulty is lacking, the levels are built to accommodate motion controls, which they haven't included here, but first time around I would say they were largely disliked. The boss fights are tedious to say the least, and the camera can definitely, definitely cause some issues. But when it does come to the core gameplay, when everything's working as it should, especially from World 5 onwards when that difficulty really did spike, the biggest compliment I can give this game is every time I died, I always wanted just one more go, even with those more near dull and lackluster levels. Welcome back Monkey Ball, I wish it wasn't Banana Blitz, but it's still great to see it back, it's better than no Monkey Ball, and it's definitely better than Monkey Ball Adventure. Now I will say I was arguing between a 6 and a 7, but down to the low retail price, you know, you can pick this one up in that 30 to 40 range, it's a series I definitely want to see new entries in. I'm going to be giving this one a 7 out of 10, because to me it is good. Just know I'm a Monkey Ball fan, so maybe if you haven't played it before, take one point off, go in with a little bit of risk. But no, there's nothing quite like this out there, and there hasn't been for a long time. The biggest compliment I can say and what edged it towards that 7 was, I kept on coming back for just one more go, and that to me says it all. Just don't come here looking for motion control. Thanks so much for watching, do you agree or disagree? Have I been too soft on this one? Because I am a self-admitted huge fan of this series. Let me know in the comments below with your thoughts, if you played it, did you pick it up? Hit subscribe and I'll see you all on the next Gaming X.